Hey y'all, let's do some box braids. All right, so first things first, what's the difference between knotless braids and box braids? Box braids are those OG braids where you add all of the hair at the base, you wrap it around your natural hair, and it has that knot at the base. They're a lot fuller looking, and for me, they are a lot quicker as well. Knotless braids, right there in the name. They don't have that knot at the base. They're a lot flatter. They look more natural, and they have a lot less tension. And a lot, a lot, in a lot of cases, they are less painful. Today we're doing box braids on Jada's hair because, like I said, they're quicker. And you know, with kids, things got to be quick. You got to move along. Y'all start getting on each other's nerves, and that's just a bad situation. So we're giving Jada box braids today. Now, the good thing about the braids that I'm doing in her hair, um, they are bigger, so they will not cause any pain. And I also, you know, I go easy on her head when I'm braiding her hair because I don't want her to be in pain because that's just ultimately you know, breaking off your hair and damaging your hair and who wants their kid to be in pain. So yeah, we take it easy. Of course, I'm using my braid and lock gel on the roots and I'm also using it to using it to refine my parts. So I go in and I do my initial part and then I put the braid and lock gel on um, the part and I go back in and I clean up that part. Now, first tip, I'm dropping big tips for free today okay so y'all make sure y'all are paying attention because these are some jewels you want to make sure all of your braids are aligned right so you're going to use that braid and lock gel and you are going to mold your hair to either to the center of um, the section so if you notice all of my braids are sitting in the middle of the section you don't want some of them starting over to the right some to the left everything needs to be aligned and neat that's what's going to make your hair look you know a lot more professional and neat now that's what the braid and lock gel is going to help you with it's going to help you to mold your hair to the place where you want it and it's going to keep it there um, so that you know your braids look a lot neater this is what helps me so if you want to purchase some, you can go to kellyloganhair.com and purchase my braid and lock gel. Now, this braid and lock gel is special. You know why? Because it's made by my two hands. This is not a formula that I'm buying from China. This is not an Alibaba recipe. This is all me. So I know exactly what we want for our hair or for the most part, you know, what, what we need. So... That's what's so special about my formula is that it is made by someone with hair just like yours or close to it. Um, so yeah, make sure all of your braids are aligned to the center. Make sure you go back and you comb your roots with a fine tooth comb to get them as flat as possible. Now, when you add the hair, you're just going to wrap it around your natural hair. Use your index and your thumb to hold your natural hair and just start braiding. For me, this is the easiest way to do it. There are a couple other methods for adding the hair. This one I find is the easiest. So you just use your natural hair as that third strand and use one section of Konecalon hair. Once you start getting to the part where your natural hair is ending, you just start to borrow from the sections of Konecalon hair to create three strands again. Now, when you borrow that hair, you wanna make sure that you do it in a way where the hair is moving naturally. If it's not moving naturally, then your braid will start to twist and turn and it won't look neat. You want the braid to look uniform all the way down. And once you start doing these braids, you'll know exactly what I mean. Or if you've done them before and they start to twist and turn, you know exactly what I mean. That's from when you borrow sections of hair and you don't do it in a way to maintain that uniform look. <clears throat> Another tip, you wanna make sure that the amount of hair that you are putting on each section is proportionate to the density of your hair. What do you mean, Kelly? Do not take a very small section of your hair and put a ton of hair on it. One, that is just way too much tension and you're just gonna break your hair off. Jada's hair, and for the most part, most people's hair um, is a lot more um, fine around the perimeter. So 
I wanted to make sure that she is not obviously experiencing any breakage. So that's another reason why I gave her larger box braids. Don't put a ton of hair on a small section of your hair or your hair is going to break off. Also, make sure you're maintaining that tension at the base so that your braid doesn't start to slide down. Okay. After I do this, obviously you guys know the rest. You're just going to dip the ends. I chose to braid Jada's hair before that I, before I dipped the ends so that I could get that crinkly look. So you're just going to hold it in there for about 20 seconds so that that curl pattern sets in place. And this is the final look. She hates this part, but don't she look beautiful, y'all? <laughs> these braids turned out super cute. So if you do these braids on your own, make sure you come back to this video and let me know how they turned out. But until next time, y'all, I hope y'all have a great day.